What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest Weekly Clause. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. So today, it is Easter Sunday. If you celebrate it, happy Easter to you. I do need to attend to a few things because it is Easter after all. So we'll skip the happenings at the macro level. Instead, the focus will be on Virgin Galactic and the fact that we have reached a new all-time low at $2.98. This comes on the back of a 22.41% decline this week alone. Many of you have asked in the comments as well as in person, is Virgin Galactic going bankrupt next now that Virgin Orbit has formally filed for bankruptcy this past Tuesday? And so in today's video, I'll give you my answer with some of my perspective, then I'll take a quick look at the technicals and I'll close with where I stand on buying, selling, or holding, right? Those are the three options. As always, this isn't to be taken as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is my personal approach to investing and a thought process behind it. I recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information I'll be sharing. Drop this video an early like if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so jumping right into it, Virgin Orbit has now gone and done it. They have officially filed for bankruptcy as of Tuesday, April 4th, after failing to secure additional funding. Before we answer the question of whether or not Virgin Galactic is at risk, I need to provide a bit of background on the Virgin Orbit and Virgin Galactic connection. Both companies fall under the Virgin Group as part of the Richard Branson Empire. However, these are separate entities, and that's important to note. Virgin Orbit was spun off of Virgin Galactic in 2017, and similar to Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit went public via a SPAC merger in 2021, again making it its own separate company with a different balance sheet and a different management team. Think of it like this. Elon Musk founded both SpaceX and Tesla. If SpaceX went bankrupt today or was on the verge of bankruptcy, it wouldn't impact Tesla as a company. The only practical risk is public image and the fact that Elon could sell Tesla shares to provide additional funding. Now, the Virgin Orbit troubles really escalated after they failed their UK launch earlier this year in January. One of the main concerns prior to the bankruptcy filing was whether or not Richard Branson would resort to selling more stocks in Virgin Galactic, for example, to continue funding Virgin Orbit. After all, the Virgin Group and Richard Branson himself over time have injected over $1 billion to keep Virgin Orbit going. We now know that Branson has not sold any additional shares to try to save Virgin Orbit this go round. So Richard Branson did not sell any Virgin Galactic stock, but we crashed anyways. Why? The short answer is that there isn't much trust or belief left in Virgin Galactic to actually launch this quarter as planned. So any negative news in the broad market or surrounding Virgin Galactic specifically makes it that much easier to drag the stock down. To be clear, there is no indication that they are not on track. It's quite the opposite. It actually. During the last earning call on February 28th, Virgin Galactic stated that commercial service remained on track for Q2 2023. Not only that, both VMS Eve and VSS Unity are once again together at Spaceport America. To top it off, Virgin Galactic on March 9th reported that their validation flight with VMS Eve are progressing along smoothly. Now, I realize that they have not provided any information since then, but this simply means that they are in full execution mode to ensure that they deliver. Hype will only return if execution leads the way, and the management team at Virgin Galactic fully understands that. And so the main thing to pay attention to for a non-profitable company like Virgin Galactic is how well are they executing against the plan they have laid out? And the answer to that is currently based on the validation flight news, it's tracking the way it should. Also, you wanna pay attention to the cash burn rate versus the cash on hand and what that looks like. Even if you assume that the Virgin Galactic cash burn rate hits the top end of the forward guidance they provided during the earning call, they can operate with zero cash injection through Q3 2024. But they really shouldn't have to and they will start generating revenue in Q3 this year, so long as they follow the course and launch commercial flight. The bottom line for me is this. Virgin Orbit is a separate entity altogether, okay? And though I feel for all those people who have lost their job as a result of the bankruptcy, this does not impact Virgin Galactic's ability to continue operating and delivering on their vision and strategy, okay? So I realize that fear, uncertainty, and doubt have absolutely taken a hold here. And of course, the media isn't helping with headlines like this one. Now, that said, 
looking at the charts, we did come into the week with the overall market trending lower, but the Virgin Orbit news is really what took us down hard. The stock entered the oversold zone on Tuesday when we hit $3.43. It ultimately crashed to its lowest point ever, right? This is a new all-time low for the Virgin stock at $2.98 before managing to close the trading week at $3.17. The thing is, despite that small bounce, we are still in the oversold zone with RSI at 25.97. Remember that an RSI of 30 and below is considered oversold. Personally, I think the selling was overdone and shorting Virgin Galactic while the negative news piles on is currently the preferred strategy for most traders. Near term, we are due for a technical bounce to take us out of the oversold zone, but I don't expect any major move up until we have a formal date for commercial launch or at the very least, news surrounding the rocket power test flight, which will be the last gating item prior to starting commercial operation. With that in mind, what am I doing? That's really the question, right? So Virgin Galactic, and I feel like I have to keep saying this, is an extremely high risk investment. It is one that I am approaching personally with a long-term view. For a bit of context, according to Vantage Market Research, the space tourism market could grow at a compound annual growth rate of 36.4% between now and 2028. And really, you gotta remember that Virgin Galactic is pioneering and trying to usher in an entirely new industry with space tourism. If they manage to pull this off, and I believe they will, the upside here is immense. I mean, we're talking massive, okay? Yes, Virgin Galactic is down significantly this past month with a loss of 41.77%, but that's because it had a nice run up thanks in part to the overall market performance and the fact that they remained on track. Taking a step back and looking at the year to date performance and you'll realize that the stock is only down 9.48%, which isn't that bad so far this year. So what did I do this week? Well, I bought more shares of Virgin Galactic. It wasn't a crazy amount, but I did manage to add another 100 shares. 50 of those shares were at $2.99. It doesn't get any closer to perfectly timing the bottom than this. This doesn't mean that it couldn't trickle down and go lower next week, but this is why in this environment, dollar cost averaging is the safest approach. Another fair question would be, why did I buy more? The reason is simple. The stock is once again trading at a significant discount. The market cap of Virgin Galactic now sits at 882 million and some change, while they have nearly $1 billion in cash sitting in the bank. The market is valuating Virgin Galactic at less than the cash they hold. For anyone who believes in the long-term prospect of this company, not buying here at the all-time low for maximum returns feel counterintuitive to the essence of investing. That's why I bought. And so the last thing I will say is this. Perspective is everything. One of the biggest catalysts for this stock falls in a near-term time horizon. Meanwhile, the stock is the cheapest it has ever been. It's not unthinkable to see us return to $6 and achieve an easy 100% return on investment by the end of Q2 when commercial operation starts. No matter which way I look at this, I'm personally not investing for today, but rather for when I believe the market will be next year, when rate cuts go into effect, and more importantly, where I believe Virgin Galactic can be by the end of this decade when they pull this off. There will absolutely be opportunities to sell along the way to lock in profit. That time, however, isn't right now when we are virtually at the bottom. Accumulation is the name of the game at this point for me, and my buy points will continue to be strategic to make my dollars stretch even farther. But on that note, that is it for me today. I hope everyone, again, who celebrates it, is enjoying their Easter Sunday. If you found value in my content, click that like button and share with others who you think could also benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe, it's free. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. I'll be back on Sunday for my weekly video. Till then, you can keep up with me here on Twitter for crypto and NFT related news. Thank you for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.